So ngayong umagang ito, ako po ay magtuturo guys kung paano ba gumawa ng frequency distribution table. Ano po ba yung frequency distribution table? It is a device for organizing and representing group data. So when the data contains more than 30 cases, frequency distribution table is constructed to make the task more manageable and to save time in calculating different statistics. So paano natin gagawin po yon? So meron po tayong steps na susundin guys. So, ito po yung steps na susundin po natin in order to construct the frequency distribution table. Number one, kukunin po natin ang range. Ano po ba yung ibig sabihin ng range? Range is equal to highest score minus the lowest score. And after you have computed for the range, kukunin po ninyo class yung compute the number of intervals using this formula. So, the small letter N is the number of class interval and the big letter N is the population or total number of observations. So, your N is equal to 1 plus 3.3 .3 logarithm of N. So, kung ano po yung population po ninyo, so in your scientific calculator, there is a symbol there, the LOG. So, you press it and get the value of that. So like for example, yung uh, number of population po ninyo, yung number of observations is uh, 36. So press log 36, multiplied it by 3.3 .3 times 1. So after that, you need to compute for the I. Okay, so I, what is I? I is the interval where I is equal to the range divided by N. So guys, see to it that you have to round off your final answer to the whole number in your number of class interval. And then your i, which is the range divided by n, you are going also to round off to uh, the whole number. Okay, so paano po? Let us um, apply our formula in our example. So, construct the frequency distribution table of the data below. So, here are the age of patients of hospital for the seafarers, September of 2020. So, here are the numbers. In the first column, we have 25, 28, 27, 30, 32, 25, 31, 26, 29, 6, 31, 30, 21, 32, 18, 50, 53, 60, 50, 54, 45, 40, 37, 25, 20, 27, 32, 24, 29, 30, 25, 24, 10, 12, 15, and 28. So, ito po yung data po natin. So, kung bibilangin po natin, guys, ito po ay 36 po lahat. Ibig sabihin, yun po ang number of observations. Okay? So, before you construct the frequency distribution table, gagamitin po muna ninyo ang tatlong formulas. So, una, kukunin po natin ang range. So, Based from our data, ano po dyan ang may pinakamalaking number? So, di po ba ang malaking number po natin ay 60 at sa, na makikita po sa second column at ang uh, pinaka smallest number or the lowest number is 6 na makikita sa first column. So, using the formula, range is equal to highest score which is 60 Minus the lowest score, which is 6. So, subtract the two numbers, then equal to 54. Okay, pag nakuha mo na po yung range, step 2 will be your number of classes. So, since sabi ko kanina, there are 36 number of observations. So, kukunin nyo po in your calculator. If you have your calculator with you there, 1, 1 which is constant, plus 3.3 .3 logarithm of 36. So, 
Guys, kumuha po kayo ng inyong calculator, press in your calculator the log, L-O-G, in your calculator there. So, log 36, whatever is the value, multiply it by 3.3 plus 1. So, therefore, the answer is 6.1357. So, 61.3157 class is gagawin mo pong whole number. So, therefore, ang whole number po natin, ang n po natin ay 6. So, ang 6 na yun class ay number of classes. So, pagkatapos nun, you have to get the interval. The formula for the interval is range divided by n. Since our range is 54, then divided by 6, which is our n, then our interval is 9. So, pagkatapos nito, guys, kagawa na po kayo ng frequency distribution table, pero see to it na magtatali na po kayo. So, you have your, your uh, table there. So, titingnan ninyo para po hindi po kayo mahihirapan. See to it that you have to tick. Kung nakuha nyo na po, then ititik nyo na po, iti-check natin so that you will not be um, confused. Hindi po kayo mako-confuse para po sa tally. Okay, so ngayon po, nakapag-construct na po ako. Okay, ang gagawin po natin, so since ay ang ating pinaka-lowest number dyan ay 6, using the interval of 9. So magbibilang kayo starting from 6. So 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So, 6 to 14, ang interval niya po ay 9. So, ngayon, start, you have to start from the bottom. Okay, ito po yun sa kwan ko sa mouse. Mag-add po kayo, 6 plus 9 magiging 15. 15 plus 9 magiging 24. 24 plus 9 magiging 33. 33 plus 9 magiging 42. 42 plus 9, 51. 51 plus 9 magiging 60. And then, dito po, mag-start ulit po kayo, guys. 14 plus 9, 23. 23 plus 9, 32. 32 plus 9 is equal to 41. Until na umabot po kayo ng 68. Okay, now, since ang 6 po yung classes po natin, magbibilang po tayo 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Sana hanggang dito lang po. But, the highest score po natin ay 60, kaya nagdagdag po tayo ng isa. So that we will be able to write 60 here. So, ngayon po ay pupunta na po tayo sa second column, which is the tally marks. So, nga ngayon, ngayon po ay babalik po kayo doon sa inyong table, sa inyong data, na ito po, titingnan nyo po from 60 to 68, ilan pong katao ang may edad na 60 to 68, and so on. Okay, so ngayon po, ay meron na po ako ditong tally. So, see to it, guys, na ang tally ninyo ay kung anon, ilan po yung tally ninyo, yun po yung frequency. So, in the third column, we have frequency. From 60 to 68, the frequency is 1. 50 to 59 is 2, 42 to 50 is 3, 33 to 41, 2, 24 to 32 is 20, 15 to 23 is 5, and 6 to 14 is 3. So ngayon po, kailangan ang frequency po ninyo, ito total po ninyo. See to it that the total number of your frequency is 36. Why? Because the number of observations is equal to 36. Pag hindi po magtutugma, you have to go back to your tally marks kasi po baka po nagkamali kayo. Medyo nakakalito po ito. Kaya lang, see to it na you, you must be careful on how are you going to do the tally. Okay, now, so since the, num the total number of your frequency is equal to 36, you have to go to your fourth column, which is the class interval. Paano naman kinuha po yung class interval? Pagkuha ng class interval ay ia-add mo po ang age in years, the lower limit and the upper limit, divided by 2. So that's why 60 plus 68 divided by 2 will give you 64. 
51 to 59 will give you 55. 42 plus 50 will divided by 2 will give you 46. 33 to 41 divided by 2 will give you 37. 24 plus 32 divided by 2 will give you 28. 15 plus 23 divided by 2 will give you 19. And 6 plus 14 divided by 2 will give you 10. So ito po yung class interval. Kung paano po kinuha yung class interval. Ang pinaka-last na column is what do you call the class boundary. So ano po yung class boundary? Ang gagawin po natin guys ay magsasubtract po tayo dito sa lower limit po natin ng 0.5. Para po makuha po natin ang class boundary ng lower limit, mag add po tayo ng 0.5 dito po sa, upper, sa right portion which is the upper limit ng 0.5. So, 60 minus 0.5 will give you 59.5. 68 plus 0.5 will give you 68.5. 51 minus 0.5 will give you 50.5. 59 plus 0.5 will give you 59.5. 42 minus 0.5 will give you 41.5. 50 plus 0.5, 50.5. 33 minus 0.5 will give you 32.5. 41 plus 0.5 will give you 41.5. 24 minus 0.5 will give you 23.5. And then, 32 plus 0.5 will give you 32.5. 15 minus 0.5 will give you 14.5. And then, 23 plus 0.5 will give you 23.5. And the last one, guys, is 6 minus 0.5 will give you 5.5. And 14 plus 0.5 will give you 14.5. So, ito po yung pag Construct ng frequency distribution table. In the first column, depende po yun sa given you. Kung ito po ay aging years, then you have to uh, label it. And then, second column, we have the tally marks. Magna na magta-tally kayo. Whatever is the number of tally marks, yun po yung frequency po ninyo. Fourth column, we have the class interval. And the fifth column, we have the class boundary. So, once you have already constructed this, then it's very easy for you to get the three measures of central tendency, which are the mean, the median, and the mode. So, ito po yun, guys. I hope na naintindihan po ninyo and you learned something today. And have a great day, everyone, guys.